Dr. Barbara Breda. Uh, Robin? Do you predict any uh, mechanisms for viruses or bacteria in the detection of the ingestion of chicken soup? That is a very interesting one. Actually, um, I, I would predict them, yes, absolutely. Um, given the ubiquity of the response, so that the, the fact that bacteria are able to respond to such a wide variety of cues, I would expect chicken soup to be absolutely one of them, yes. So, so, so there's a common saying, which I'm sure you're aware of, that laughter is the best medicine. And, uh, I'm just curious if you think that there's any correlation to what I think may be an implication that um, alternative medicine is a joke. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very... I'm very glad that you bring that up, because what it does, uh, that hypothesis actually provides an explanation for the increasing use of alternative medicine by people who don't actually believe in alternative medicine, which is very strange. So there's, of course, there's a very large segment of the population that takes this seriously, um, which, of course, would not fall under your particular hypothesis. But I guess that there's a, a, it pr the, the fact that laughter is a good medicine provides room for expansion and provides um, an interface for those who don't yet uh, believe that this is a solution to actually come in touch with uh, the therapies and then have this particular response and be infected and, and respond positively and then, you know, spread the word and, and be influenced. Absolutely. Um, so it's all well and good that we're here in a science conference, you know, trying to get at the truth. But I think people are, are interested also in real-world interventions and what, you know, applied research. So do you think the NIH can do anything with, with your data? I mean, should they, be, oh, should they be encouraging, like, the worst therapies in the sense that the, the things that, you know, have come out only in recent decades, like, I don't know, alien healing that bacteria probably didn't have time to evolve to detecting? Um, <laughs> Oh, no, they should, they should absolutely invest in, in research, but um, mostly in terms that um, the research in this will provide us with um, information about, uh, about how bacteria are actually hijacking us. Because while this is a, a seemingly a good response, of course, those medications are actually not specific and they're not helping anyone. In fact, they're allowing our, um, our pathogens to, to reproduce. So maybe by, by either hijacking uh, their ability to, to detect the use of these, um, these placebos, you might be able to eradicate the use of alternative medicine. That would be a good idea, yes. current uh, mode of transmission involves the internet. I wonder if you could um, speculate on how this could have evolved pre-internet days. Oh, the internet is merely because that's an easy way for us to detect large-scale transmission of the, the, the idea, the meme that uh, adaptive, that alternative medicine is, is a good idea. Um, but pre-internet, of course, this would go as a mouth-to-mouth -mouth thing. So I've used, like, I've used acupuncture. My cold got better. You should try it too. That's, I mean, that would be a conversation, and that could absolutely be sufficient to spread, uh, to spread this, this uh, malinformation. Um, I actually had a question. Um, I was wondering if your gullibility hypothesis predicted a mutualistic or even symbiotic relationship between pathogens and Deepak Chopra. <laughs> it, isn't it obvious? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, Dr. Barbara Breda. 